So uh, as a reminder, I would like to um, uh, mention that we are right now talking about the easy problems, the easy optimization problems. Um, specifically, last time um, we were looking at this chart and uh, we were specifically discussing the problems that are solvable with uh, an LP relaxation and uh, the greedy heuristic. Um, we have uh, we have we have seen several several practical examples of uh, problems that can be solved with the uh, with the LP relaxation, and uh, uh, we have figured out that if we are able to, uh, there there are, there, are, there are in fact a lot of problems of uh, IP uh, optimization that can be formulated in this form, and if we are able, uh, able to uh, find this this formulation, then uh, the rest of the, of the solution is going to be pretty easy. Um, the second step was uh, to, to look at, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the dynamic programming and uh, see what problems that uh, what problems can be solved with uh, with that um, method. Uh, we have only uh, talked about shortest path so far, and uh, right now I'm going to be starting. Uh, I'm going to be uh, discussing uh, the uncapacitated lot sizing problem and. Um, then we will switch to the problems that are solvable with the greedy heuristic. I just have to say that this does not um, cover all of the algorithms. So there are definitely are the are problems that are still kind of uh, uh, simple, but it is uh, the most important ones that uh, you definitely need to know how to how to reformulate. So as a reminder, um, we were talking about the shortest path and um, the dynamic programming approach. And we have defined the dynamic programming uh, principle, which is, um, it says that the, the optimal solution value uh, for optimal problem is calculated recursively from the optimal values of, of, similar, of similar instances of the same problem, right? So we were, uh, we have defined uh, uh, an instance of a problem as a, as a concrete concrete problem with uh, with the, uh, substituted numbers um, and a problem itself is defined as, as a subset of uh, of instances, right? So we are um, we are we we have all also defined the size of a problem that is the the length of the binary uh, description of a particular uh, instance uh, from from a problem. So we were we were talking about a problem that is defined by X as set. Uh, or uh, like a particular like a particular uh, set of constraints or like anything that can define the set. And uh, we also had graph uh, defined, for example, by the, the constant n, or if we are talking about the graph, it could be n and uh, the number of like the and uh, the number of uh, vertices and uh, and the number of of edges, all of these parameters would characterize uh, for us the size of the problem. And so in dynamic programming problem, the idea was that uh, Having having the large problem, we can probably uh, slowly grow the solution. Um, uh, like having uh, if you if you if you have, if you can uh, if you can uh, solve a problem for um, for n equal to one, like a very small problem in a reasonable time, and then use it in order to solve for n is equal to two. Um, uh, in, in polynomial time and then continue this in polynomial time too, then the entire solution that you're that you're getting for uh, uh, for for a very large problem will also be uh, going to be a polynomial time uh, solvable problem and um, like it will, it, it's going to be an efficient algorithm. Um, the recursive property uh, that we are talking about here is called the principle of, of optimality, and we have uh, formulated it for um, the shortest path problem. Um, any questions uh, here about what we have covered this time? No questions? Okay. Um, you guys have seen this uh, in the in the book in the chapter now as yet? Okay. Um, then let me let me actually uh, go a, a bit more into details about what what we have covered. So, given a a, a, a shortest path is talking about the following problem: the directed graph. We have a directed graph. With vertices and and arcs, 
and uh, you have a, a, a source uh, vertex, you have a, a terminal vertex, and you are trying to find the, the further, the, like you have uh, you have weights on the on the edges, which are the costs of passing through an, through an arc, and uh, you're you're trying to find a sequence of, of of arcs that would form a path from S to to, to T that has the the smallest sum of all of the uh, costs on the on the arcs. Um, the uh, the pro the the the, pro the problem can be formulated as a, as an integer uh, program problem remarkably well, and um, it, like we have we have discussed that in fact it can be solved with uh, linear or uh, linear uh, relaxation as well. Uh, but it can it can also be solved using a slightly different approach, um, which is based on uh, this observation that if shortest path uh, from S to T to some uh, to some uh, node T passes through a node P, so we can have like have um, S and P, and we have a path that goes around, comes to P, and then goes around, comes to T, and it's the shortest path from S to T, then uh, it must be, uh, then, then this uh, part of the path is, uh, in fact, the shortest path from S to P, and this part of the path is the shortest path of, from P to T. Um, this observation is quite straightforward. Uh, you can uh, you prove it by, con by about some contradiction. Um, and uh, we can denote uh, with a detail of V the length of the shortest path from S to V containing at most K arcs. Uh, in this case, um, the following the following uh, recursive expression uh, can be um, can be noticed. Uh, what it's um, what its uh, its meaning is uh, like it, its meaning is the following there are, there are so um as you go uh, so you, you you can see that that the left hand side of this of this equation um uh, contains uh, a length of the shortest path that has a k uh, k arcs and the, the right hand side has only k uh, k minus 1 uh arcs in the path so um as we it, it says that as we add no uh, like arcs into a path uh first of all uh, it can only become sh like sh uh, like shorter uh, meaning that it can only you can only get a, a, a better a better path uh between 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 the between the two nodes um, um and there are, there are two two possibilities that could happen. So as you add a new a new uh, if if you allow to take a new arc, uh, either you have you you might be able to find a new path uh, between S and uh, and V that that now contains K nodes, uh, meaning that it it goes to some node I within the K minus one uh, arc arcs, and then it goes from I to V. On, uh, on like as as the last as the last um, increment, or alternatively, the the path just might not change at all. And um, this uh, defines uh, basically the uh, this recursive this recursive expression. Um, this is a very good example of the principle of optimality because since we have this uh, parameter k. Uh, it it uh, kind of restricts the size of the problem that we are that we are dealing with on on each step, and therefore the the, the size the, the the solution to the problem on the next uh, on the next iteration uh, is completely can be completely recalculated from the solution of the problem from on, on the previous iteration. It's important to note that this dk is in fact defined for any like for any v where where v is no, the node in the graph in the graph so when you are implementing this kind of algorithm um you are finding shortest paths from s to all of the other nodes in the graph um and including the the one that you are really interested in the uh, the, the node t so what i'm saying is that the size of the of the graph always remains the same, and the only thing that you are iterating with is uh, the the length of the path you're you're uh, considering. 
Any questions here? Is this clear? Why is this is a minimum between the two values? Uh, I mean, I'm here to, to ask any. You probably should ask me right now because I feel like it's uh, it's 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 more it's it's better if if everyone uh, knows the the the, the answers. Anything? Okay. Okay. Um, so the next problem that we are dealing with is more like a practical one. Um, it's uh, it's concerned about the uncapacitated lot sizing problem, where you have um, uh, several several uh, time periods over which you, you are producing um, some uh, some equipment, let's say. And for each time time period, there is a demand dt, um, where t is the, the the index of the of the time period. Uh, time periods that are going from one to n. Uh, in each time period, you have a demand dt. Uh, in each time period, you have a the cost of production um, and uh, and, a, and a, a, like corresponding variable, the production quantity on each on each on each type time step. So it's um, um, basically the 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 total the total cost of production in a in a period t will is going to be equal to pt times yt. Uh, you also have a cost of storage. Um, which is the the price to pay for a unit of stock uh, to store it between the period t and and t plus one. So if we if we have decided to produce something, uh, we have paid the price, and then it did not go go out because because the demand was uh, was lower. We are still allowed to, to store whatever we have uh, into the next into the next time period, but we need we, we need to pay the price uh, for the storage. Uh, and then there is a cost of setup um, F, FT uh, that is a fixed cost, no matter how much you produce in a, in a, in a particular time, time period, it will, um, you will suffer this loss um, no matter, like essentially, uh, if, as soon as you're producing something. So it's, uh, this loss is gonna be equal to FT uh, if you're producing anything and it's gonna be equal to zero. If you are uh, uh, if you are not not producing anything uh, in the particular time period, is this uh, statement clear? Like the, the overall okay, cool. Um, so the down below is the the integer linear programming uh, formulation for this problem. Um, the problem all, all, all is obviously uh, a minimization problem. We are trying to minimize the cost. Um, we're trying uh, some. We are minimizing the cost of the total uh, uh, production plus uh, the total storage uh, plus the 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 total uh, cost of uh, of setup. So like we have a, an indicator uh, value x t uh, that indicates if we are uh, producing anything in in time period t or not. And I, yeah, I didn't introduce it, but the 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 variable st is in fact the amount we are storing between the time periods t and t plus one. Um, so uh, in order to enforce um, the, the like the, the the continuity or the fact like the fact the, the definition of our variables, we need to write down um, a balance equation. Balance equation is telling you that. Uh, you cannot uh, you cannot uh, get the equipment for nothing. You you cannot just uh, magically the equipment cannot, cannot just ma magically appear. Uh, so whatever we have stored from the from the pre previous time frame uh, from the from the time frame t minus one, and produced in this time frame um, the the amount y t is going to be equal to the demand plus the uh, the amount we we we're going to store into the next time. We also need uh, to make sure that we are formulating, uh, we are we are in, like ensuring the the setup costs, uh, the setup indicator x t, uh, we ensure like we are force, uh, enforcing its definition. Uh, we need to make sure that as long as like as soon as uh, um, 
x t is equal to uh, zero, y t is also equal to zero. And uh, if x t is equal to something, then y t can be basically anything. And we know that it's uh, it's a, an adequate um, formulation just because if x like there's no there's no way that x t is equal to one and y t is equal to zero just because we like this wouldn't be an, an optimal solution obviously because we, we can just always uh, set set up x t to be equal to zero and the the cost of uh, of uh, the objective uh, the value of the objective is gonna be uh, even lower so we only need to uh, have some rate of value m that ensures that uh, that is greater than y t can ever be for example M can be um, the, sum, the sum of all of the demands in the, in the problem. And um, we are left with uh, just the assumption that we have not had stock in the very beginning and we don't have stock uh, in, the, like, in the end of our uh, forecasted period. Any questions regarding that? Maybe. Yeah. Is there any sense that have this over and Um, that's a good question. It's actually uh, it's actually true that it will include it in the optimal solution just because you can, I mean, you can um, think from con like but by contra example. Although I just have to say that um, it, it might depend on the, on the difference between PT and, and, uh, and HT. Oh yeah, the, the, the difference between PT and HT. It is possible that uh, ST is actually lower, and you are inter You might be interested in uh, bringing uh, some uh, some uh, some something into the like. You, you might you might you might wish you might wish that you were to produce some amount of of, of uh, uh, equipment in the past before you actually started planning. So uh, so for the for the S zero, you need you would actually need to enforce. A particular uh, particular amount that you have uh, you have had in the very beginning, but for the rest, it's not. For the last, it's not necessary to. to so as as n, uh, would, you, you don't really need to to worry about that too much. But as zero would need to be enforced. I think. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, any other questions? That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, let's see how uh, you can possibly. So uh, this is this is a, a, a formulation as a as a linear programming problem. Now let's uh, take how let's take a look at how we can reformulate this as a problem based on a graph. Um, in, uh, in, on this graph, you can see that there is a source node uh, uh, labeled with, with zero, and there are m multiple. Um, like there are, there are multiple nodes uh, from one to six, um, from which there is uh, there is like which which are essentially uh, and like nodes with the uh, with the uh, with the with the demand. You probably remember that in the minimal cost network flow formulation, there were uh, demands on on each node. Um, you guys don't remember that because you you haven't seen this lecture before. Okay, so let me remind you very very quickly. That last time we were actually discussing also minimal cost network flow problem, where we had, sorry, um, yeah. So we, we had a directed graph. Um, we had arc capacities. So uh, on on a, on a directed graph, for each arc there is a, a capacity uh, of on the amount of uh, which is the, the amount of flow, the maximum amount of, of flow an arc can withstand. Uh, there is also for each arc there is a, a cost of the flow, and there is also optional demand on each node uh, on each node in the in the graph. The um, the trick is, is that the sum of the demands is, is, it needs to be equal to zero. That's uh, that's the only thing. And uh, you're asked how uh, the the demand can be distributed. So for like for some nodes the demand is going to be positive, for other nodes it's going to be negative. And um, the flow needs to be distributed so that uh, this, like the, the eventual demand are all satisfied. Uh, and with the, with the minimal amount of cost um, uh, that is flowing through the network. 
So there's a, there, there was an example of this. Uh, you had a network on each um, on each uh, node. You had a demand. Uh, sometimes it's it's positive. It's positive. For example, here demand is plus two. Sometimes it's negative. The demand is minus minus four. And then uh, for each arc, there there is at least a couple of numbers, which is the uh, the cost and the capacity. And for example, a unit of flow might flow uh, from the node uh, from the node uh, which one from the node node four uh, to the node uh, one or to the node one uh, through this arc. Like a, like a, a, like a single unit of flow would cost you C I J. Um, is that is that formulation clear? Okay. Um, and uh, we have we have take like we we, we take a look at this problem and we have shown that it's uh, it's actually a simple problem and we can show, and we we can we can solve it with the linear linear programming um, relaxation. And now we are uh, trying trying to formulate uh, the uncapacitated lot sizing in the same terms. So we need a graph through which we pull, like we, we push a flow. It has uh, capacities. It has it has cost on the arcs. And um, there is a flow that is that, that is going. Um, the trick here is that um, yeah. So uh, basically, we 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 are we are defining the um, the the demands on the on the nodes from like on the on the for the nodes on the bottom. Uh, each each of these nodes from one to six would correspond to uh, a time as a time period, obviously, right? And um, the uh, the demand uh, on the on the node zero is going to be the negative of of the sum of the demands uh, on the for for the nodes on the bottom. Um, now we need to uh, we need to figure out what would be the capacities and also uh, the the weights on the on the on the nodes. It's, it turns out that just like in uh, like like in many, in many problems, uh, uh, the capacity here. Um, is not really uh, necessary just because it's it's not uh, like physically like you can you can assume that capacity is just a very very large number or or or, or infinity, but the price is in fact very uh, or the cost is is in fact very uh, 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 um, very much relevant here because we ha we need to we need to um, model the fact that we are producing something uh, we are producing uh, we are we are modeling it through assigning um, a value of y i to um, an arc that goes from arc arc zero to arc uh, to to uh, from node zero to node one to node i. Um, this uh, like since the since the the val like the value uh, of the corresponding of the corresponding uh, the, the corresponding the, cor the, the corresponding amount of produ of production is going to be. Um, uh, is going to be represented with the flow that is flowing from the from the node uh, from the node zero to the node i, and um, therefore the, the the total cost is going to be y uh, y i times that that flow that flows through the arc. Therefore, it makes sense. Um, and the there will be added arcs uh, from the from the uh, from the node i minus one to the node i plus one for each. For each node, um, uh, so that so, so that we can model the amount of flow or the, the amount of stock, uh, the, the amount of equipment that is being passed from previous time period, time period to the next one. Any questions regarding the, the formulation of the graph now? Cool. Um, so now we can uh, uh, try to uh, formulate um, dynamic programming. Um, formulation or then dynamic programming principle for uh, uncapacitated uh, load sizing. First of all, we need to we need to uh, know the, the following. Uh, there exists an optimal solution where the production takes place only when the stock is zero. So, um, if we are looking lo looking at the graph, it just means that um, the flow. Um, is going to so like we we are gonna be like we, we we are producing the, the our equipment and uh, we only turn on the machine when we understand that we have no, no nothing left in the stock like 
it, it just can't happen that uh, we still have something in the uh, like to store and we we have enabled them just wouldn't make sense from the optimality viewpoint and second uh, second uh, proposition here second part of this statement is that there exists an optimal solution where if production takes place it exactly satisfies the demand for the next k periods of time meaning that um, if there's if there's flow that is flowing through an arc this this flow must be sufficient to supply like some number some like unknown number of 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 demand and exactly exactly that you know, uh, that that amount of uh, amount of uh, uh, production uh, an amount, uh, exactly that amount, number of equipment can be produced. Um, is that is is this uh, like would you say that these two statements are uh, obvious? Is that obvious to you? Yep. In a certain period, you can produce and then right. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to wait. Right. Um, so it is not obvious to me, and we are uh, we are going to prove this. Um, um, so um, what it what it means if like from the from the viewpoint of the graph, it just means that every every flow, uh, every kind of unit of flow uh, that that passes through the through 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 the network cannot have a cycle. So uh, the paths through the through the through this network um, would have. Uh, uh, like, like would have a, a structure of a tree. It, like it wouldn't be uh, possible for flow to uh, to be flowing into, uh, for for example, in, uh, like in this in this in this example, it, it wouldn't be possible to have a flow that uh, that flows from uh, node four to node five, and it wouldn't be possible for uh, for any amount of flow to go from zero to four. Um, like why? Like how is how is that uh, related to the to the proposition? Well, if if um, so, the the first statement, the first the first statement. Um, oh, sorry. This uh, yeah. This the, the first statement um, uh, rules out the first uh, the 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 arc on the top, like this one from zero to four, and the second statement, in fact, rules out uh, the second arc from four to five, just because. Uh, just because we would we, we would be produ producing in the in the in the node four something that is still um, like we will we will be producing even though we still have some something in stock and uh, the 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 node from four to five uh, the arc from four, four to five is rolled out by by the second statement because um, because we would uh, we would uh, have uh, more like we, we would have access in in the amount of, of uh, uh, equipment produced um, that 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 uh, that does not satisfy exactly the demand of uh, of of the of the of the uh, se uh, sequential number of uh, time periods does that make sense any questions regarding this because I, I'm 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 going to use this fact in order to like the the, the fact that this flow has a, a tree structure in order to prove it to to prove the the statement itself. No questions. Um, okay, so let's uh, suppose that the optimal flow forms a cycle somewhere. Um, so it it's, it doesn't it doesn't have a tree a tree structure. Um, Let's say that yi is greater than zero, and then as i greater than, than zero uh, and so forth, and as j minus one is greater than zero, and also and also yj is greater than zero. Where like on this on this image here, for example, it could be that uh, like y two is greater than zero, and then um, like as two as three 
uh, and also as a Y4 are all, all of them are, are greater than zero. That, that, would, that would form a cycle. Um, then uh, y, yj uh, is equal to uh, y, uh, yi plus si and so and so forth, uh, all the way to sj, because otherwise the follow is null is not optimal. Okay, so I just have to say here that um, there is a typo. What I meant to say here is that uh, the P, PTs, oh yeah, the PTs and HTs. So instead of instead of the the amount of flow, this this is a, a PT. Uh, this is a PI, and this is H, and this is H. Uh, because otherwise, the, the flow is not is not optimal. How to how to how to understand this? Uh, well, if some of these two are like like is is greater if, if one of these numbers is greater than the other uh, on the left hand side or the right or, or the right hand side we would prefer one way of reduction over the other right like a single unit of flow that needs to end up in the in the in the node number four can be either be produced in the, in the node number four specifically or it can be produced in the node number two and then go to the number to the node number four if uh, if the prices were not the same, then we would prefer one over the over the other, and everything would be coming from that uh, from that source. So we assume that like we we, we end up with the with the um, uh, we end up with the conclusion that this is the 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 quality hold. Uh, we can reroute the flow coming from uh, yj to to sj minus one and make xj equal to zero, uh, meaning that we can reroute everything um, through one of the one of the passes passes here. Like we, we can reroute everything through here, and uh, uh, make y y four be equal to zero, and um, that would allow the, uh, allow us to put x four to be to be equal to zero, and that would um, first it would eliminate the cycle. And it would reduce the cost, even though we have like we assumed that uh, in like for the for, for the optimal flow we we have already had the optimal flow, and uh, we were able to find uh, an improvement of the flow, which is, in fact, um, which is in fact a, a contradiction. Um, therefore, there's only one arc arriving arriving at at node T. Um, for if for, for for any t for any time period t that can have a possible a, a positive flow. Therefore, um, therefore we, we we can we can conclude that uh, our our flow in fact forms a graph, and our first two statements uh, hold true. Any any questions regarding this uh, line of thought? No questions. Good. Um, so uh, now we, we need to we need to uh, we need to observe that uh, the the st the the amount of flow that we are storing uh, is equal to the sum of um, over over i from one to t of y i minus the sum over i from one to t of d i. Um, Essentially, uh, this is uh, this is the uh, the constraint that that defines defines uh, uh, def like it, it kind of it kind of passes on through um, from the fact that uh, we are um, this comes from the fact that we are uh, we cannot get the equipment out of nowhere. We we need we we have to. Either either produces uh, produce pr produce this in the, uh, we we have to we have to produce it in the past sometime 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 in the past. So the the amount of the amount of uh, of equipment that we are passing through from the uh, time step t to the time step t plus one is equal to the the total amount of equipment that we have produced up to uh, the time step t minus the total demand that we have obtained. Um, uh, after the after the oh like up up to up to the, the time step t. 
Okay, so let us uh, put CT being to be equal to, uh, to uh, PT plus the summation over all of uh, I from one, from T to N of uh, HI. So this is, uh, uh, I just reminded that PT is the cost, the cost of production and, and I, HI is the cost of storage. We are, uh, CT is in fact the price that we, we would need to pay um, uh, per unit of flow uh, in the very last time step, if we were like if we were to produce the the, the items for the last time step in the period T. Does that make make any sense? Let me um, throw it. Let's say that this sorry, so this is our node zero. This is our node n, the time step n, and this is our time step t. And um, we would like to satisfy this demand that goes from uh, from from the last time step. Uh, we are trying to understand how much would we have to pay um, uh, for the equipment that's going to be sold on the last time step if we were to produce it uh, in the time step t. What's, what's the answer? The answer is, uh, well, you need to first uh, produce it in time step T that would, that would uh, uh, require your PT um, of, of your resources. And then you need to pass it uh, between the, the nodes until it comes from the, the, you know, into the, the node N. And on each, on each of these nodes, you're paying a price of H from T to N. Any questions here? Okay. Um, then you can uh, reformulate uh, the the part of the objective function that um, is related to the to the to the to the production and the storage, not uh, that that is not the, the, uh, related to to the to, to the stock itself. Um, and uh, you can see that here we just uh, re like we just re used the first uh, the first equation here. To substitute it uh, instead of ST, and then we uh, reshuffle uh, the summation signs in order to uh, to end up with this um, with this expression. And here you can see that um, this part of the objective does not depend on um, it does not depend on uh, any uh, variable. It's just a constant. So for real. Uh, it only matters. It only matters uh, uh, when you are producing um, your, um, uh, your 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 items. So uh, we we have essentially have eliminated this um, this variable st altogether. We we have we have came to uh, a reformulation. Um, so like from now on, we will we will consider a, a cost function that. Consists of two terms, in fact. The one, the one term can, um, is related to production with, the, with the basically a new cost, uh, uh, the, 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 the cost that we have redefined, uh, plus uh, the cost of, of the setup, the, tot, the, the cost of the total setup. Um, any questions regarding this manipulation that I have done just now? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, you would need to subtract that uh, after you have uh, you have uh, done all, the, all, all of your cal calculations. Definitely, uh, but like it it would not affect the the process of solution. It's just the, the last step that you can you can add as. Uh, as a necessary step. That's a good question. Any other questions? Nope. Good. Um, so we introduced HK, uh, which is the minimal cost of solution uh, for periods from one to K. Um, so we are uh, basically, what we are doing here is we are, so we are having this graph, so this is zero, and this is from one, uh, from one to n. 
and uh, there there are some uh, nodes in between and there are some arcs uh, and the nodes are connected and there is there are, there are demands uh, what we are doing here is we are picking a k like some some uh, of the k and we are only considering this portion of the graph we are saying let's forget that we we have we have actually a much, much larger problem let's consider only the first k uh, time periods and uh, we denote with hk the the solution of our problem if we forget about this uh, this part of the graph uh, if the last production occurs at time t the production before t costs h of t minus one and after t it is uh ft plus ct times the sum uh, the sum of, of demands from t to k um, uh, it's uh, not from t to k it's from t to uh, n i believe so there's uh, a typo here too um, okay so um, is this is the is the is the are there any questions about the last statement? So the there there are two two options. So this uh, this demand in the last step in the in the last stage in the, in the stage n can be satisfied from any of the of the nodes. So the um, it could be it be satisfied by uh, by the the equipment produced in time time n specifically, but it also could be satisfied anywhere before. And uh, we are we are we are assuming that the last production have occurred at time period t, some time period t, for example, during here. And we are saying that then our and like first of all we know that it means that uh, from time period from the previous time period to the next time period nothing not, nothing uh, was flowing uh, through this arc. Right, because otherwise we would, we would create this cycle. We know that there is no cycle, and therefore, um, um, therefore, okay. Let me let me say that this is t and this is t minus one, and nothing nothing was flowing through this arc. And the last the last production happened here and here there and uh, in any of the time periods further further than t, nothing has happened. Uh, what, what does that mean? It means that we have satisfied all of the demand so this uh, this part of the graph becomes completely independent uh we have satisfied all of the demand that we have had here uh in the uh, in the production that occurred previous to the time period t and all of the all of the like everything that we uh, that we have uh, we have uh, produced after the time period t was consumed and we know exactly how much it was Therefore, um, we are saying that the total cost is going to be the cost for uh, for the for the uh, for the, for the first t minus one um, time periods h of t minus one plus the amount of uh, of like of of uh, resources f t for the setup of the line of the production line plus c t times uh, the amount that we we will consume uh, after after the, the time step t uh, in total, which is the amount that we, we will have to produce here. Uh, you know what? You can actually think about it this way too. Um, yeah, we can just say that we can just say that we are talking about solution like let's say that this last thing is k yeah that's a good point yeah um let me raise this um yeah that's a, that's a good one um any other questions here is this more or less clear Okay. Uh, the very last equation or this one? The very last one? Yeah, so I'm coming to it. 
Um, the principle of optimality for, for, for the uncompensated loss sizing is now can be formulated as follows. Our, our uh, optimal cost uh, for, the peri uh, for the K period, for the K time periods, um, um, will depend on, uh, will like, we can condition that, uh, the, like we can condition this cost uh, depending on the time period at which we have produced last, uh, like last time. So since the last time could be any time, we are, we are minimizing over, we, we, we take the minimum over uh, T from one to K of, uh, of the uh, cost, of the total cost of, of production, uh, assuming that we have uh, pro last produced in time period T. Uh, let me explain this once again. So this number right here in the, bra in the bracket uh, is the amount of money of the, the amount of resources that we need to spend if we were, uh, if we were uh, to choose the time step T as our last time period at which we, at which we, we produce. But our last time period that we should produce can be anything, right? So it's up to us to decide when we want to produce and uh, like which which time period should be the last one. So let's decide it so that our costs are minimized. And so we, we see we see all of the time periods at which we can produce last, and we'll pick the one that is uh, best, which is this minimization over here. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Yeah, you would. You, so, would, you, first of all, you would uh, step. You would take steps by k. So k would be increased. First, for, first you you solve for k equal to one. And that's uh, an obvious, an obvious uh, thing. And then uh, you you solve for for a k equal to two already uh, based on this on this expression. So when you solve for a k equal to two, you substitute here h of one, and uh, you have um, like minimization over two numbers. And uh, then you uh, you solve you 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 get the number the the h of two, and then you you you're trying to look for h of Three, uh, knowing as h of two, which you will be substituting here, uh, and and also h of one will also be used here when you when you're using for for you when you're looking for h of three. So uh, it's, it's it can be represented uh, the dynamic programming kind of uh, algorithm can be represented as a graph. Um, so you have uh, um, you have h. So you have h of of one, you have h of two, you have h of three, and so forth, which are probably the nodes. And the h of two is going to use h of one. The h of three is going to use h of one and h of two. And h of four is going to be using h of one, h of two, and h of three. And therefore, you would need to. Um, yeah, I mean, no, normally you probably you probably uh, would uh, find h of one based on some other uh, kind of understanding because h of one is a simple problem. You have two nodes, you have a single arc of a known cost, and you know exactly how how much the demand is. Uh, this is one, this is p one. You know exactly how much how much flow you need to take here, right? So it shouldn't be a very very complicated. Uh, have I lost you guys anywhere? Have I lost you anywhere along the way? Okay, cool. Uh, I'm very happy because I was worried since we covered the the name programming last last time. So I was a bit worried. Sounds good. Okay. 
Um, yeah, and um, there is also a reformulation of the uh, the net programming of for uncapacitated loss sizing, where you have nodes uh, from zero to n and arcs um, uh, that go uh, from a smaller node to the larger node uh, with the cost of uh, f of i plus one plus uh, c of i plus one plus uh, like times the total demand uh, from from i uh, from from i plus one to j uh, of of dt uh, of dt the, the total demand. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, so this is a so uh, I just wanted to say that uh, this is an example of uh, the uncompensated lot sizing problem having the same uh, the same reformulation as a dynamic programming problem as as the shortest path. So you can in fact put the entire problem of uncompensated lot lot sizing that we have um, that for which we just designed its own uh, <laughs> dynamic uh, programming uh, principle. We could just uh, put it as 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 the as the as a, the shortest path problem, and then use the same uh, like use the same principle um, as a, as was noticed uh, from the, um, the the shortest path problem itself. Uh, how to how, like how is this picture related to um, uh, to the to the um, uncompensated load sizing? Let's take a look. So we consider an instance of uh, ULS with uh, four four time time periods with the demands two four five and one and the prices uh, of production all like uh, equal everywhere and uh, the the prices of storage uh, equal to one two one one we have some numbers for the uh, set of costs we start by calculating the the value of of the vector c which is uh, just a reminder, which was our re like our um, new coefficient objective, new new objective coefficients. So we can we can start by for, uh, by formulating this um, by 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 uh, learning the c and uh, the constant that we would need to subtract in the very end is equal to thirty seven. So now, as we know the constant, we can just switch. To um, to the total uh, to the to, to the new coefficients and uh, forget about everything else. Um, we successfully cal calculate the values of h of k using the recursion. Um, as I as I as I mentioned before, h of one is relatively simple simple to calculate. It's going to be just equal to um, uh, the f one plus c one times times d one uh, equal to twenty eight h of two it can be calculated from h one and h of uh, h of three can be calculated from h uh, two and h one and h four can be calculated from the previous the previous uh, values so the minimums are going to be twenty eight sixty a uh, hundred and one hundred and six well walking backwards we see that f uh, h h uh, h of four is equal to 106, which is equal to h of two plus f three plus. So it's um, uh, basically we are saying that, um, uh, like essentially, this uh, this part here is proving to you that this is uh, in fact the, the optimal solution. But that's not. Uh, it's probably not the, the the main the main part here. The main part here is the following. Um, this is our graph essentially as, as we knew it uh, but instead of this way um, where did I, um, okay. yeah so look instead of putting the graph this way we now put it this way so this this node zero now is going to be the first node and then uh the node one the node two the node the three the node four um, and the arc is going to be going between the node i and the node j if 
in the original graph, the, uh, the flow, um, you remember that it was in fact, um, in the original graph, it was a tree, right? The flow was, was a tree. Um, therefore, uh, we can, we can uh, uh, separate branches one by one. And um, um, the, the, the art going from, from one to three is gonna be used if, if, um, if uh, our uh, branch uh, is, taking, is taking into account um, the, the first two, um, or even the, the first, the first, like essentially the first three, um, uh, three uh, nodes. So the, if if we if we are using this branch, if the, if we're using this arc in the new graph, we have uh, uh, like we we have tried the, this kind of flow. And once we have we have defined a, a, a subgraph, defined a, a branch, we ha we have defined a flow as well because. The, the, all of the demands needs to be satisfied. And so the total amount of production uh, that, that is flowing through uh, the arc between the, no, the node zero and the node I is predefined. So everything like, like every, everything is basically being uh, predefined by the, the graphical structure on the, of, the, of the flow that we are trying to, that we are considering in, in a particular time, time period. Okay. Um, I hope that I have con convinced you that uh, there's a, a, a reformulation as a uh, as a shortest path problem. Uh, but it's not it's not that uh, different, uh, and the, the 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 resulting algorithm is uh, essentially have has the same complexity, um, and it for its proof you you would need uh, the same kind of uh, line of thought now. Let's uh, switch to another important uh, example um, that is considering the optimal subtree problem. The optimal subtree is uh, a tree problem that, that in, in, like, involves a tree uh, that can, consists of vertices, ver ver vertices and, and edges with, uh, with, the, with a distinct root uh, uh, denoted by R and weights uh, CV for all of the nodes in the graph. Uh, the problem is to choose a subtree of T rooted at the same, uh, the same node as the original tree uh, that has a maximal weight. Um, how can we, how can we draw that? How can we make, make a picture of it? Uh, we are having a, a T. Say um, there are also here, um, and we would like to. Uh, so this is our R. We would like to select a subtree. Let's say, let's say um, of this form, like this. This is uh, this, this is a subtree. So all of this, like this entire sub sub graph, is going to be a subtree. Um, and we would like to pick a subtree such, such that, such that uh, the, the sum of the, um, of the weight of the, on, the, on, the, on the nodes is the largest. Is there a, a question regarding what's tree, what subtree is that? Okay. Is the, is the formulation clear? Like what's, uh, what we are trying to, to achieve? Not really, not really. It's all it's all basically defined uh, by the by the weights. The, the trick is that the weight can be uh, both positive and negative, and so it might be it might be interesting for you to actually take uh, a particular node of a negative weight into your subtree if if uh, if there is something behind like, like if there is something of a positive weight that is attached to this thing, uh, so that you get, you have access to. It. That as well. Um, it's kind of a, a, an interesting problem. A lot of a lot of uh, a lot of problems can be like uh, portfolio selection stuff like that can be formulated this way. Um, but to 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 actually construct a dynamic programming algorithm algorithm for this, we would need to first define what is a predecessor of a node. Predecessor of, of a node V uh, is uh, is a is a is a node P of V. Um, 
which is directly uh, connected uh, to, so that if, if this is the node B, then the predecessor P of B is this one. So it's uh, one has uh, that, that, that is uh, on the level up above uh, directly connected to it. Successors of V are uh, the, all of the nodes S of V uh, that, uh, for which the node V is a, like, is a predecessor. And each H of, H of W is the optimal solution value of optimal subtree of a, of a tree with W as a root. Um, so we are saying that if we are considering a particular subtree, let's say that, that, that there is a subtree here that also has some like values, and um, we are uh, we are defining like for a subtree, for example, this form. Um, I'm sorry. Um, the, um, this is our our uh, original tree, and we are. If this is the value, uh, if this is no W, uh, the subtree is going to be the entire subtree of the of the node W that is defined by W as a root. So when we are talking about uh, H of W, we are we are we are assuming that we have chosen everything that is um, underneath underneath the the W, like the total the, the, the total thing. Um, and the principle of optimality is claimed to be the following. H of V is maximum between zero and C of V plus the sum over all of the sub, uh, all, all, of, 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 all of the successors of the uh, optimal solution for the subtrees corresponding to the, to, to, to the successors. How to understand this, how to uh, kind of uh, make sense of it. Like th this is interesting because this is the first this is the first problem that you cannot really easily form, reformulate as a, as a shortest path problem. It's, a, it's kind of a slightly, slightly different thing um, because it has a more complicated tree structure. Um, so it's, um, let's, let's take a look at how uh, we can reason about, so let's say that this is our uh, node B. And it, it has several uh, successors. Um, uh, this is going to be like W1, W2, W3. And uh, each of the successors will have some, uh, some subtrees. And each of the subtrees would have a weight uh, of total. Um, so to, together, together with the node itself, the total weight is going to be. Uh, H of uh, W, H of uh, W2, and H of W, W3. Um, how can we understand what's the, what's the optimal uh, value for this entire tree that is corresponding to V? Well, as a, as, as a, as a rat rational individual, you should think of, well, the, 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 there are actually uh, four options. That we can consider. Uh, we can consider if we are uh, taking this entire tree at all. Like if we if we want to, like if it's positive, like it's if its value is positive all, uh, at all or not. We might decide not to take the tree, and then h h of v is going to be zero. So this this is this case. Or we might decide to uh, take a w one. So we, we, we might decide to build our tree to be like this. Um, and then like in this case, we would have, uh, we would have um, like, like when, when can we decide to, to take uh, W1 into our subtree? Uh, only in case if H of W1 is in fact positive. So if, if H of W1, uh, it's positive, then it makes sense to take this entire tree into, into a subtree because it would, it would incre increase the total weight of the subtree that we are trying to construct. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep.
What do you mean reconstruct the optimal subtree? Well, if you said that you're using like HD and Oh, sorry, I feel confused. So um, let me let me let me ask for well, clarifying question. What's what's the problem that you're solving? Like, what, what the comment is about solving the which problem? I, I, I use my own argument. So this gives you the optimal solution value. So if you want to see the optimal. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So you, that's a that's a great that's a great question. Yes. Um, so. Um, while you are kind of calculating this uh, this values, you can also keep track of which uh, which items do like like which uh, like which items of this are are equal. So yeah, basically, if h of w is equal to zero, then it's it's truncated, and if h of w is positive, then it's it's uh, it's included in the in the eventual subtree, um, unless there is something. And uh, unless there is a predecessor uh, that has a, a, a zero value, because it's, it, it might have happened that, for example, there, there is another, like there's a subtree of, of, of this big tree that has a positive value, uh, but the value of this entire tree, for example, the, the, the way that, that corresponds to W1 is equal to zero. Oh, is is like a very, a very, very, a very negative number, and then it would would make sense to take to take this entire subtree uh, into account, and then uh, even though uh, so at some point somewhere here we had a positive h of of uh, I know u uh, h of u was positive, but it doesn't mean that it 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 gets included just because uh, at some point like at some point. It was like equal to to zero. The the age the age of the, the entire thing is equal to zero. So how you would reconstruct? You would take you would take the, the root r, and then you would be its successors, and you would take a look at which h are, are equal to zero or not, and then you would um, you would you would make a breadth a breadth of first search uh, in order to expand the subtrees for those. For which w's uh, oh sorry the, the, for for which the h's are are greater than zero. So if if h is equal to zero, uh, we would not expand the subtree because we assume that we did not take this uh, this entire subtree into account. We are not putting it into our optimal subtree. Um, and for those that are greater than, than zero, we will, we are putting them into subtree. So we we are adding them into breadth of for search and therefore we are constraining the entire optimal structure. Make sense? Okay. Do I need to make any more, more comments on that? Guys, come on. I can I can I can put some time in here. Uh, I was just wondering like the example you have here with H of U that's positive and H of W one is like let's say negative. You can use this form this by starting at the bottom, like the we let each of you first, or like yeah. So when when I'm actually constructing the algorithm, when I'm actually actually running writing this algorithm, I'm going from the bottom yeah, to the top. Okay, perfect. So yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. So I I first like I, I initiate initial the initialization of this algorithm is to first uh, take the leaves the leaves like L1 uh, L2 the ones that do, do not have any successors and uh, calculate H of L1. And h of l2, uh, which are going to be uh, basically the weights of the leaves themselves, and then we construct it out. Awesome. Any other questions? Cool. Yeah. So there is uh, an example uh, regarding the, the optimal subtree uh, problem. Um, uh, basically, you can see here that. 
there is a root that has a, like a quite quite a, a negative number, but it, uh, it in fact doesn't matter that we shouldn't take it because there is that there still might be some subtrees that have uh, like that that, that would balance that that would balance it out. You can see, for example, that uh, eventually there's um, there's a sub a subtree of this form that in fact has a positive uh eventually like the like a positive uh total value right so we would we would start by uh by calculating uh the sub the the values of of the leaves uh, and then from the values of the leaves we would we, we would calculate the ones that uh correspond to the predecessors and um and uh and so forth so um and then for for the for the entire tree. Um, okay, so I think I think I don't I don't really need to spend too much more time on this because it's uh, pretty clear from 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 here. There's another very interesting problem of binary knapsack. Uh, you probably remember that uh, binary knapsack was an, a, a, a like was determined as a hard problem that we cannot really solve in polynomial time. However. This um, like IP like integer problem problem is also a hard problem, but as we can see, some some specific kind of problems uh, that are more like more uh, concrete uh, like like restrictions of the of the entire IP they are polynomial time solvable. So uh, we will try we will try to define uh, the binary knapsack problems, which we can in fact solve in polynomial, in polynomial time with dynamic programming approach. This, this is a very uh, interesting topic. Okay, so given a positive integer, uh, given positive integers, A, J, uh, and B, uh, the right-hand side, uh, also a positive integer, a binary knapsack problem is the maximization problem over uh, of, of, a, of, a, of a linear objective subject to a single uh, constraint, um, like, any, like single inequality constraint, right? So we have um, CJs being the values of the items that we are interested in, and uh, we have AJs, which are the, 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 the weight, and uh, there's a capacity on, on the weight that we can carry, and uh, each item can only be taken once. So for each item, there is a binary variable that tells, tells us if we are carrying it or not. And we would like to maximize the total value of the items that we are carrying. Um, so uh, here, the trick that we are we are planning to introduce is to say that number b, number b over here, is in fact bounded from above, and like we are only considering problems for which b has a, a like a, a very small value. Let's say let's say that. Um, if the total number, the total number of variables is n, um, then the, the 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 value of b is, is order of log n, like b um, n is the number of variables, and uh, uh, the value of b is uh, of order of log n, and then uh, as soon as as soon as we are uh, we are in this setting, in this scenario, or like any polynomial uh, of, of 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 this size. In this case, we are we can we can say that the, the problem can be solved efficiently. How can we how can we uh, look at this? So our uh, once again, our b is small, our n is very large, but our b is very small. We can consider lambdas going from zero to b, since since b is very small, it's not it's not that much. Um, and R going from uh, one to N. We can define problem um, PR of lambda uh, in the following form. So this problem is also a maximization problem, uh, but now we are uh, like artificially constrained the size of our, the, 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 our capacity that we can carry, uh, putting it to be equal to lambda instead of being equal to b, and uh, 
Therefore, we are parameterize uh, the optimal solution to this problem with the uh, with the coefficient lambda. So um, we are essentially um, so lambda is is one kind of dimension in which we are restricting ourselves, and then there is another dimension in which we are restricting ourselves, which is r. R is a number that is smaller than than n, and it counts uh, the number of items that we are considering. Now we can see that there is a there is kind of a natural table. Uh, we have uh, lambdas on uh, uh, like as in columns. We have R as the rows, and we uh, can consider that. Okay, let's let's take a look at what what if we are carrying just one one item and our maximal capacity is one. Then we can probably potentially we can solve this problem like find a solution and then utilize this solution in order to solve. The problem when we have two items and we have capacity of, of two, um, then we can uh, uh, solve this problem since, and and go, uh, go and so forth, uh, like so on and so forth, until we have came to the to the point where we have uh, b lambda b being equal to b and the r being equal to n, which is going to be the eventual solution of this, our original problem. Okay, so this is uh, this is the idea. That we need to. So uh, therefore, we are we are we, we are deeply concerned about this f r of lambda because uh, basically the values on, in this table are going to be all felt like filled up with the with this f f r of lambdas. If in the solution x star of p of r of lambda uh, x star of uh, x star r is equal to zero, then F r of lambda is is equal to f of uh, f r minus one of lambda. Okay, let me let me actually ex explain the the the, the intuition behind this. Um, we are taking a look um, at the the optimal solution. Uh, the optimal solution is a binary vector consisting of of r uh, of r entries of r binary binary entries, and we are looking at um, at the very last entry. And we are we are we are considering the the very last item, uh, the, like the, the the item number R. It doesn't really matter which which item it is. It could be any item, but let's let's talk about the item number R. We're kind of um, uh, co like considering two cases: when we are taking the number R, number the item number R, and when we are not taking the, the item number R. If we are taking the the on the, the item number R, then um, and like the, the, then we sorry if we are not taking the item number r if even if we if we are able to take it uh, then we should we should we should uh, conclude that when like when we have did not have the ability to take the last item so when uh, when our vector was actually shorter than this than this one the vector of of um, uh, of, of the answer the, the vector of of the solution. Uh, was shorter than, than this one. The the eventual in the, the eventual solution did not like shouldn't be should be changed. So the since like okay, let me put it this way. Um, we have solved we have solved uh, the the problem for r being equal to to uh, for for r minus one and the particular value of lambda, right? We have solved it right here. Um, now we are solving it for the next value of r. So we have added another another variable, another another item that we can we can put into the backpack. Uh, if we have decided, if we have solved the problem, and if we have decided to put uh, this, if we have decided not to put this item, the, the very last item, into the backpack, then uh, it didn't matter that we have added this item into consideration in the first place, right? And so the value that we have had in this in this uh, um, uh, cell should be just repeated uh, over here because nothing nothing really changed between the these two problems. The the solutions are meaningfully the same. Uh, therefore, we are saying that, that if f r star is equal to zero, then f r of lambda is equal to f r minus one of lambda. Cool. Um, if we have added the last item, then x x one star uh, x r star is, is going to be equal to one. Um, 
then um, we can assume that, okay, we have had, in fact, uh, a reason to put it in, but if we were not to put it in, if we, if we considered the, like, the, previous, the, the previous solution, um, the, the, the optimal solution, uh, so uh, we, are, we are saying that, uh, okay, so in this, in this objective function, uh, now we have an, uh, a new kind of like comparing it to the case when we did not have this last item in the, in, in the consideration. Our objective uh, value have changed by CR. So we are saying that F, FR of lambda uh, minus CR is going to be equal to FR of the case when we had the, the, the capacity that is smaller uh, exactly by the amount that the, that the, uh, the item R is taking. So uh, it's going to be lambda minus A bar. And so we have this, um, this expression right here. This gives us the principle of optimality uh, where we are basically considering the two, the two, the two edge cases. We're considering the case when we have uh, put the last item, or or the case that we when we have not uh, the other way around the, the 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 place when we have not uh, the place when we have put and we have not put the last item into into the backpack. And we will we're going to be like obviously since we are maximizing, we're going to be choosing between these two, maximizing uh, whatever the eventual uh, solution for us it is. Any questions regarding? This principle is not No questions? Cool. Um, okay, let's take a, let's take a, uh, let's, let's take a look at the, the example. Um, so we are having a zero one knapsack instance. Um, uh, it, it consists of only four um, uh, variables and, uh, and uh, B is equal to seven, uh, which is not much. The values of uh, FR of lambda and PR of lambda are shown in table five one. So like, it really doesn't matter what PR lambda is at this point. So like, basically it's, uh, it's uh, like P PR of lambda is something that would allow you to um, track back um, the, the actual, so, it would allow you to, to track back the, the content, the, the value of the X star. Since, since uh, F does not give you, so this, this uh, principle of optimality only, only, only talks to you about the optimal solutions, never talks about the, the uh, sorry, about optimal values, never talks about optimal solutions. Uh, so to recover the optimal solution, you would need to, uh, to amend, um, the like like amend this principle of optimality with, with some extra steps, but it's not it's not very crucial. Um, so uh, there is a, like like basically basically this table which I have I have put here is this one. Okay, right. So it's a lambda and PR of lambda and it has R and it's uh, um, R is is just is just put in the in the subscript right right here. Um, okay. So um, the values of, of F1 of lambda are calculated by the formula described above. And the next column is then calculated from the top to bottom using the recursion. Um, um, so we are like from like we are we are gonna be filling up this from, from the top to the bottom. Uh, uh, or in, since I kind of transposed this entire table, in this case you want to go from, from left to right and increase in lambda. Um, so working backwards, you would you would be able, uh, like uh, you would from from the table of p, you would be able to reconstruct the, the x stars. Um, I just want to say here that uh, the the size of this table is going to be uh, n uh, by uh, a like n by b, and since um, the number of uh, bits that are necessary to, to write down b is log log of b, then we would we would need to say that uh, 
uh, well, this algorithm is in fact exponential in B, but since we have put a constraint on the number of, of, of the size of, of B, then we have a constraint on the number of bits that we like uh, that we need uh, to uh, to write down this uh, this problem, and so we are here. Uh, so we, we actually can 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 solve this problem this problem polynomially as soon as B uh, is assumed to be small. Um, any questions here regarding this uh, example? Um, the dynamic program for programming of integer next size is a uh, is an ex interesting ex extension on top of that. Uh, we also going to be assuming that the the the, the, the uh, bound B is small enough. But now uh, we have types of items instead of items themselves, and we can uh, take take uh, multiple uh, elements, multiple items of the same type uh, into our backpack. Um, for lambda from zero to b, once again we are uh, and for and for r from one to n, we are defining a problem which is similar to the previous one um, uh, with the with uh, the, the like like essentially essentially with the uh, with only exception that that the, the maximization happens over the, uh, the the integer vectors instead of the binary vectors. What's changed here right now is uh, the the principle of, of of optimality because now we can we can um, there's something more that that we can. Um, Condition on uh, now we we would not only condition on the fact that we have put items in the into the, the backpack or we have not put the items into the backpack. We also need to condition on the fact that how many items that that we have put. So if we have put something, uh, then uh, we would need to rely on uh, gr of lambda minus minus ar without reducing reducing the value of r. So, correspond like uh, you can compare it to the to to the previous uh, example. We had f of r minus one, r minus one, of the same thing of lambda minus a r. So, the the only thing that is happening that is that is changing here for real is is um, the fact that we are not like we we do not uh, we are not in a hurry uh, to to uh, uh, Get rid of uh, of variables. We are just we are just like we are just reducing uh, the value of xr, and that in fact can affect uh, the the com the computational computational complexity of this problem because sometimes it could be that like if if your if your value a a j is not in fact integer and a very small one, then this this value xr can be a very large one, and then uh, and then you would need to kind of subtract XR every time and you would need to make it very, like, a, like a lot of times. And so it would take you a very long time to, to, to fill up the, uh, the table. However, here in this particular example, we assume that AJs are all integers. And, and so we have a lower bound on the, on the, on the, on this number AJ. So we're good. Um, so it's important that in this case, it's, it's important that, uh, not only there is a bound on the value of b, but we also have a, a, like a particular bound on the on the value of aj um, in order to make this, this problem polynomial time, time solvable. Um, the the eventual principle of optimality is a very similar one. Uh, again, it it comes from the fact that we are uh, conditioning on the on the last item that we have put into into the backpack. Any questions here? That's a good. That's a good point. So um, that's a good point, and uh, you will. You can see in the in the in the book, they actually have another. Uh, another kind of dynamic programming uh, approach that tries to get rid of the of the entire of so it 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 it, it puts in something like the following it, it tries to start with uh, 
with the throwing out of the backpack all of the items of a particular of a particular type that you have we have put into the backpack. So they put something like CR of lambda is um, CR times XR summer uh, plus GR of lambda uh, minus XR star A. Right, so you can see that they throw out like the, they, they they throw out um, this uh, this items together with their capacity, and uh, they also consider like they they also assume that they uh, have like they have put them already. So they they say okay, we so we like, if this if this is the backpack, there is some some uh, capacity that is not longer available to us, and it's called CR times XR star. And we just need to care to, to care about filling up, filling up the, the rest. So this is also a feasible approach. You can put, you can see that in the book they actually have another principle of optimality. Um, but uh, eventually, this principle of optimality is simpler and easier to, to, to prove, just because instead of like getting rid of the entire thing, you are just getting rid of a sm of a smaller part. This corresponds to a single item of the last type. Um, so we are we are only here. So here we are only uh, getting rid, uh, rid of, of, of a single item of the of the last type, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, captured by the fact that we are only considering uh, like the, the the coefficient in front of this and in front of this is one. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, the, the, there there are, there are some some caveats. If you if you're trying to do it this way, there's something more that you need to you need to you need to uh, uh, assume and prove. Uh, so uh, the the principle of optimality is becoming more a little, a little bit more complicated. Uh, interestingly enough, dynamic programming is also can be can can also be reformulated as a, as a uh, as a shortest path problem. The following way, you can um, you can uh, put down the notes from zero to b, zero to b uh, that are cross corresponding to to the value of lambda. You remember that lambda was also ranging from from zero to b, and you can put arcs from lambda to lambda plus a j for all lambda and for all j. So for all lambda, let's say that we have a j a one being equal to three, then uh, we have uh, zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. And so uh, the, the arcs that correspond to, uh, to, to J, um, to, to the index one would, would look like this. And so forth. What does it mean? It just means that we have decided to take an item of uh, like uh, we, we have decided to take an item of type J, and so we have uh, reduced the capacity of our of our uh, knapsack by 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 this much. So so we have uh, we have jumped into into uh, a node so that now the, the capacity that we are left with is smaller. Right. Um, um, so for uh, for an for for an arc uh, lambda to to lambda uh, a lambda plus a j the weight is minus c uh, minus c j and so since we are trying to find uh, the sh like the the shortest path between zero and b we would, we would like to to mean like to minimize the total cost and since it's uh, it's the uh, like the like the flow that is flowing through these arcs. Uh, is always of a unit of, of just it's just it's always just a unit flow. We're going to be minimizing the sum of all CJs that we are putting in our backpack. Any any questions? Because it's uh, it should be intuitively clear, right? Um, right, and uh, and then we need to to make sure that we. Uh, Account for the fact that it, it could be that there's some some space left in the backpack, 
and so we are adding between 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 every pair, pair lambda and lambda lambda plus one we are add, adding uh, an arc of weight zero it's just 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 in, just in case we have decided not to put nothing into the backpack it's just straight line we don't get any any cost uh we, we don't get any any uh, reward for this but it's a feasible solution okay so um we can uh, take a look at the example the example here is the same one uh it consists of uh four four variables uh and the the concern is still less less than, than or equal than seven you can see that there are arcs of of, uh, of value seven going between zero like between between every two consecutive uh nodes um this is this is just because uh x2 uh the 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 the, the coefficient corresponding to x2 is a, is equal to one already and so we don't really need to to add this arc of, of of weight zero because we have a, a better one already in the graph but uh everything else is essentially like is, is exactly the same uh we have arcs um the 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 the, the, the position of the arcs are determined by a j's the, the coefficients um in the constraint and the and the weights of the arcs correspond to uh the cost of uh of the corresponding j's of the corresponding types of the items um okay and uh any questions here any questions regarding the example or anything no questions um from this uh from this uh kind of uh yeah so from this uh intuition from this kind of reformulation as a um as a, as a shortest path there is a there is a, 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 a reformula like an extended reformulation that can uh, arise. Um, if we if we denote variables x j as the number of of items that of type j that we are putting in the backpack, and uh, z j lambda is equal to one if the arc lambda lambda uh, plus a j uh, belongs to the path in the shortest path formulation, and z zero lambda is equal to one if if we have decided to use this kind of arcs that are not um, like that are uh, like uh, valueless, then the constraints. So we basically, so basically, our our uh, um, our initial formulation for the for the knapsack had just this xj's. It, it had only only this uh, um, this xj xj values, and now we just add more more variables into the problem hope like hopefully it will it will get make our problem like eventual problem easier uh so we we are constructing an extended formulation which in fact is going to be exact and so for this extended formulation it's it's sufficient to just solve lot linear program relaxation and uh recover the the, the solution of the of the map um it is kind of interesting but also you can you need you need to you need to understand that the number of um, the number of variables here is exponential in B, so it's still an exponential algorithm. No, no magic here. Like easy problems are easy, hard problems are hard. Um, so constraints. Um, uh, we need we need to define a constraint for the definition of Z uh, that that looks like this. Uh, it basically means that. Um, like our like our our x j uh, is gonna be uh, equal to 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 one uh, this like the same number of times as z j lambda uh, is uh, like like is equal to one um, uh, so like well, yeah basically the val the value of x j needs to be exactly the same as the summation over all lambdas uh, of uh, z j lambda so basically like the we have we have a type like we have the type of the arcs that have the same kind of location and we need to to to, to select this this arcs the same number of times as we need as we select uh the items um j the path has to start at node zero so uh z j z j zero is equal to one uh at least for some uh for some j so the summation is equal to one continuity of the path 
if a path enters node lambda, then it must leave uh, leave it for some uh, for all of the lambdas from uh, from one to be uh, to be minus one. Because for zero, it's not the case because nothing enters zero, and for b, it's not the case because not, nothing leaves b. Uh, and so it, it gives us the following the, fo the following the following expression. Basically, the num the, the 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 number of arcs that are entering um, uh, entering a particular node equals to the number of arcs that are leaving a particular node. Node. Uh, the corresponding ma matrix is totally linear modular, which, as you probably remember from the last lecture, implies that this um, this formulation is exact, and uh, the solution of the linear programming relaxation gives you the exact solution of the original problem. Um, well, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I'm not sure we will hold the next lecture because I'm going to be out of town and will be extremely busy. We might just um, leave this lecture as a preparation for the for the exam because on the on the on the lecture after the next one is there's going to be an exam. And uh, what do you think? Any like like if the, if there's a if there's a, a clear uh, request for a lecture, I can just make it a remote lecture, or I can just give you a bit more time to prepare. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We can. We can. We can. We can meet next time and go over the the same material once again. See what uh, like if there are any questions. I'm just I'm just warning you that uh, like this is gonna be happening next next time then, and so you you prepare and uh, ask me any questions that you, that you might have. And I will try to will try to uh, prepare some material, probably on the same topics, probably more examples, something like this. Sounds good. All right. So the next lecture is online. I will post an announcement about this, and then after the next one, there is going to be a, a an in class uh, exam. Yep. Uh, I will be out of town, but I can hold the discussion section. Uh, remotely or or it could it could be an office hour okay yeah i guess i guess it, it makes more sense to make it an office hour yeah Perfect. sounds good thank you thank you very much